the computer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass mm -hmm. against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you for this evening, for gathering us together, for putting us, uh, put, bringing us together in your mighty name. And thank you, Lord, for that we are learn whatever we are learning today. May, may we be able to uh, practice in our lives and uh, take forward our relationship with you uh, as we continue to live in this world, placing you, building intimacy with you, doing your will in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So yesterday we saw about uh, how the cross uh, separates uh, the saint from the sinner, how the cross makes the perfect uh, from the imperfect, and how cross can uh, help us to become fervent from being a lukewarm. That is what we saw today. Oh, well, that is we, that is what we saw yesterday, and we saw one beautiful video also of uh, one lady after uh, she had a uh, she had a after she had this experience with Jesus on, and uh, she had gone back, uh, she had asked Jesus to send her back to the world, and she wanted everything, uh, everything that she uh, went through, she wanted it to be back, especially the sufferings. Yeah, because the sufferings that she went through was uh, wasted, according to what uh, she had shared. She had wasted all the sufferings. Uh, she did not uh, utilize that uh, sufferings uh, which uh, which was allowed in her life. And, and she was telling Jesus, allow me to go back to the world and bring back everything that I have gone through so that I can live beautifully. So this is an attitude which uh, uh, was which we should have. In fact, this is an attitude which saints um, should have. Whenever the time comes, the Lord takes away the sufferings. Whenever the time comes, the Lord, uh, you know, handle it uh, the way he wanted it. But uh, our attitude towards what uh, we are going through uh, is very important in this aspect of our spiritual walk. That is what makes us the difference. That is what makes us, uh, whether we are a saint or a sinner, that is what makes us, whether we are perfect or imperfect. Um, so uh, the test of it, um, as somebody uh, um, uh, you know, was asking, uh, why, why did God choose, uh, why did God plant these two trees in the Garden of Eden? Uh, can somebody say why did God plant uh, uh, the two trees in the Garden of Eden? Any 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 thoughts? Any thoughts on what, brother? Why, why did why did God plant two trees, two that tree, and, and said, you know, not to touch the tree of good and evil and the other tree tree? So why did God plant the plant two trees in the garden and gave this instruction? God has given everybody free will. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that is exactly the reason. So the Lord wanted us to uh, uh, test us. God wanted us to, you know, when, when we say that, you know, I love God, he's not just looking at, uh, uh, he's, he's, he wanted us to, he wanted to test whether our love is genuine or not. If you really look at the entire, uh, you know, the Bible from the Genesis till till the uh, till the New Testament, we will see, uh, we will see this, uh, testing happening, okay. Testing happening um, uh, in the lives of the prophets, uh, whether it is Abraham or uh, uh, anybody you look at it, you find this test happening. Whether uh, God wanted to know whether your love for Him is 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 uh, genuine or not, right? So that is uh, that is um, that that is something which will happen in even in our own life, in our life as well. If we don't have a choice. Um, uh, we don't have a choice to escape from that uh, part of our life, which means uh, we have everything in life is all about choices, right? About uh, uh, choices, uh, whether uh, we wanted to go right or wanted to go left, whether we wanted to, whether we wanted to do good or we wanted to uh, do bad, 
uh, whether uh, we take uh, uh, decisions uh, knowingly or unknowingly everywhere everywhere we have uh, a choice uh, to make yeah that is why we see in deuteronomy uh, in deuteronomy in 3015 and the word of god uh, gives us this uh, option um, the god is telling us i have set before you today life and prosperity death and destruction so while we have been given the choice while we we have been given the choice to choose between good and bad what is what is the choice that we should make as a as a child of god as a a man a woman who wants to walk with god what is the choice that we need to take while god tells this in deuteronomy 3015 i have set before you today life and prosperity death and destruction the same god he continues in the next words for i command you today to love the lord your god to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands decrees and laws then you will live and increase and the lord your god will bless you in the land you are entering to possess now when you when you really look at what god wanted us to do is not to look into the choices god is not wanting us to look into the choices of our life he wanted us to simply follow simply follow what he has commanded us to do do you agree with me or not say some response you know yes that's true that's true okay. yes yeah in fact i was quite uh, surprised by when i heard a very beautiful explanation of what god has done in the book of genesis while we we just now discussed that as well the lord in genesis chapter 2 verses 9 we see lord god made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground and the trees were pleasing to the eyes and good for food in the middle of the garden where the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so god has planted two trees one is in the middle of the garden one is the tree of life and the other tree the bible says was a tree of knowledge of good and evil so which means there was good as well as evil in that tree it was not only a tree of evil there was a choice for there was a choice there was a choice for us to choose or there was a choice there in that second tree the tree of knowledge of good and evil but the instruction which follows in the verse 17 was very clear i'm just i'm not uh, able to put that into the screen but i'm just reading out to you genesis 2:17 but you must not eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil so so god's instruction to adam was not to look out for the choices and from you when you eat from it you will certainly die the the word of god very clearly says this but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil so god god's people for god's people there is nothing called a choice or nothing to choose between good and bad for us we follow the instruction of god as simple as that we follow the instruction of god today when we don't have that as our guidance our goal or our compass we will definitely be swayed between one end to the other end because the world what are the options that we get in the world today is absolutely so deceiving the bad comes in the form of of good we will be deceived today if you are not if if you look for the choices 
so many places so many areas in our life in our own life we probably would have gone we would have probably compromised in that in that you know in that area that is why saint paul says saint paul says in uh, 1 corinthians chapter 2 verses 2 for i decided not to know anything among you except jesus christ and him crucified so if we really if we are really looking at if we are really looking at walking strongly or walking in the lord leading a holy life for us the option that we have is simply follow the guidance of the of of, of the word not to look at okay if this might be good that might be good or this i can try that i can try no so for that for that lifestyle for that lifestyle for us to move into is the most important thing is to develop intimacy with god that is why developing intimacy with god as we, we we discussed this yesterday but this mm -hmm. is the most i would say for for any person for any person if we are really looking at uh, you know uh, having a strong uh, relationship with god with god the most important thing is to focus is to build intimacy with god i i had uh, in fact i had uh, told uh, uh, shared this uh, example in the past there was a survey done among the pastors in the in in, in the us to find out what is the most uh, you know uh, or what is the mo what is the most uh, greatest or difficult struggles that they are going through in their ministry and majority of them answered back saying that they don't have time to pray and to and to spend time with the lord so this could happen to anybody you doing good work you doing uh, you know uh, you are not uh, doing anything bad does not mean that we have a relationship with god so so saint through through uh, 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 luisa picarata jesus message to us is this is to have that intimacy that closeness with each one of us i wanted to ponder some uh, i wanted to ponder now spend some time in understanding how can we build intimacy with god i just wanted to share few points with you all you can add to that we can also you know uh, listen if we have uh, some more points which we can consider how can you really really build intimacy with god one of the verse which which really uh, you know uh, scare me when i read is this verse which says in the last judgment when god bring in people bring everyone everyone in front of him and he makes a statement i do not know you get away from me i do not know you and those people who said that are the people who were with the lord thinking that they were with the lord while they were on the earth what is that they lacked they lacked that personal relationship with jesus they only lacked that personal intimacy with god for us to do the will of god we cannot do the will of god when we don't have an intimacy with god when you don't have a relationship with god or rather the will of god stems from the intimacy with god so let us look at few steps on how we can build intimacy as we move forward in the session the first thing the being aware of god's presence in our life we we discussed this matter yesterday very strongly being aware of god's presence in our life 
Jesus tells the Louisa that our body is the temple or rather our body is a living tabernacle. Living tabernacle. So when you and I are aware of God's presence, our whole attitude towards life, towards others, changes. When I am present, when I am when I'm I'm aware of the fact that, that I am not alone, I've been watched, I've been, you know, uh, I've been I've been watched, or if I do something wrong, God will get hurt. Or I would, uh, if I'm aware of the fact that God is present in my life, I would rather focus on doing things that pleases him. So this awareness can bring in a huge change in our walk with the Lord. So being aware of God's presence in the life, you know, every time, uh, ever since I really understood this word, Luke 24, 45, I don't read the word without making that prayer luke 24 35 to 24 45 can somebody read that word luke 24 45 can somebody read that luke 24 45 then he opened their minds to mm -hmm. understand scriptures yeah who, who opened the minds? Jesus opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures. So this particular point, this particular point is something which I I read, I, I read it every day before I start reading the word of God. Why? Because when, when you really look at the situation, the circumstances in which Jesus, this was Disciples, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So you don't need to understand the circumstance in circumstances in which Jesus did this particular act. It was after the resurrection. Imagine three and a half years, Jesus, disciples lived with Jesus, has seen everything what Jesus has done. But still their minds were not opened. They did not understand the scriptures as they should be understanding it. So Jesus opened their minds to understand. So the awareness of God is not something which we can probably do it by ourselves. We need the power of God to work in us. We should probably ask, we should pray every day, Lord, make me aware of your presence in my life. No, it's very very easy for us to say being aware of uh, aware of God's presence, but in in reality, in our real real life, we probably need God's help to to open our minds. Open our minds today. You know when you when you go when you read the newspaper, especially the regional newspapers, national newspapers are national. When I say newspaper, I'm talking about the websites. Okay, the news websites. Especially the regional websites, every time I open, the main news is somebody killed somebody. Today, that has become a common thing. Killing is nothing, actually. It has become such a very common thing. Rape is nothing. Misuse is nothing. Why? Because People's mind has become, mind has been blinded. The enemy has blinded the mind. So being aware of God's presence is not a, it's not a small thing. It's a big thing. And we need the Holy Spirit as we read in Luke 24, 45. We need the Lord, the Holy Spirit to open their, our minds to understand the presence of God in our lives. So the first step of building intimacy is being aware of God's presence in our life. Okay, the second, the second uh, um, part is being available for God. You know, while we we discussed this also in the past, but I just wanted to uh, reiterate the reiterate again so that we will become uh, more and more aware of this fact. Being available for God 
is me what i mean is being exclusively available for him exclusively being available for him you know one thing which i told ever since i understood this by god's grace i must say that not to boast of or not to say uh, that you know i'm doing it i just wanted to share and encourage all of you to have a time dedicated for god every day in your in your life it could be half an hour one hour more than that whatever time and also that will actually encourage your your family members today i have to when when i started this practice in my life i've told uh, my people in the in the in the family whenever you see me sitting on the floor praying that means you are not supposed to even disturb me at all and they have been so careful about that and they know that rest of my family members six of them know that that is an exclusive time that i have with the lord we should have an exclusive time with the lord if you are really looking forward for that intimacy with god we need to have that exclusive time what do you do all those things are later but then you know when i am just thinking when you and when when we we go and meet god if he asks what is that you are bringing to me you can always say lord i had that exclusive time with you for you that availability for god is a is a very very important aspect of our growth or building intimacy with him third point that we wanted to consider is this is my own wording okay look for the tickling learn more about him through the word you know god's way of dealing with us most of the times when you really look at the lives of many people in the bible as well as in the lives of the saints god comes in a in a in a very very soft manner his most of the times his is a soft landing he doesn't make too much of a noise and come most of it is a tickling effect we look for look forward you look for that tickling and you will be surprised we will be surprised how lord is leading us have you ever experienced the tickling of god i'm asking a question you have wanted wanted to no you you okay somebody said no tickling in the sense not that uh, you know uh, uh tickling the way we tickle each other i'm talking about this is a word which i used it could may not be the right word but i am talking about that gentle small the gentle whisper the gentle touch the gentle uh, you know prompting of god of the holy spirit for you to do something yes all of you have gone through yes all of us have experience for that experience that yes yes and look forward for more of those look forward and once you become once you become expert in that you will be able to recognize him very very well when you are in a crowded space when i say crowded you know in in the busy part of your life our leading our the god's leading will be much more clearer when you focus upon those small ticklings that god gives whispers that god gives and for us to understand that we need to learn the word of god to read the word of god i wanted to show i wanted to share one video uh, of a person uh, who you know it's a conversation between one girl, two one girl and one lady she talks about so beautifully she talks about the importance of reading the word of god i'll just uh, share that uh, small clipping uh, with you all
like I should have the goosebumps for it to have been valuable yeah. can you hear uh Yeah, can you hear the communion with Jesus? All yes, of it yes. is like eating food. Not every meal you eat is memorable. That doesn't mean it didn't nourish you. That's true. And I think sometimes we as believers, we have this almost romanticized view of what every moment of scripture mm. reading should mm. feel like. I should have the goosebumps for it to have been valuable. Yeah. I understand encounters. I love them. Mm. I love the goosebumps. Exactly. God made us to experience them and feel them. So I'm not at all undermining that. Sometimes you just eat breakfast because you need strength for that day. That's right. And it's not about whether it was the most delicious meal you think you've ever had it's still nourished your body. I think it's important for us to ha have that view of scripture. Sometimes you're going to sit down and eat and it's going to be one of those meals that you remember for years yes. and it's something that you savor again and again. Sometimes you're going to sit down and eat and it might not feel like it's groundbreaking what you read that morning, but it will nourish your body. It will nourish your spirit. The reality of reading our Bibles, communion with Jesus, all of it is like eating food. Not every meal you eat is memorable. That doesn't mean it didn't nourish you. That's true. And I think sometimes we as believers, we have this almost romanticized view of what every moment of scripture mm. reading should mm. feel like. I should have the goosebumps for it to have been valuable. Yeah. I understand encounters. I love them. Mm. I love the goosebumps. Exactly. God made us to experience them and feel them. So I'm not at all undermining that. Sometimes you just eat breakfast because you need strength for that day. That's right. And it's not about whether it was the most delicious meal you think you've ever had it's still nourished your body. I think it's important for us to ha have that view of scripture. Sometimes you're going to sit down and eat and it's going to be one of those meals that you remember for years yes. and it's something that you savor again and again. Sometimes you're going to sit down and eat and it might not feel like it's groundbreaking what you read that morning, but it will nourish your body. It will nourish your spirit. The reality of reading our Bible, communion with Jesus, all of it is like eating food. Not everything. Okay, so uh, did you did you understand uh, that uh, video? Did you could hear very well? Yes, yes. Right. yeah. So this is a, this is a very integral part of our spiritual walk. You know, when I say integral, it is the most important uh, uh, part when it comes to building communion with God or building intimacy with God. You know, without without knowing the person. How can you build a community? How can you build intimacy? The only way to know, or rather, the most easiest way, most evident way, the clear way to know God is to through his through the scriptures. You know, uh, you know, I was uh, I was quite surprised by the way, uh, you know, uh, Sharu the other day uh, had made a uh, made a command or made a rule at home, especially with the boys, and she said, uh, she, "This is what she said." Boys, we will. You will not have breakfast till you finish reading your word every day morning, after coming from the from the church. And I didn't know how they would react. I thought they would probably rebel, but I could see them doing that, not because of their breakfast. You know, they will not get breakfast. But mo most important thing was that that message. Sometimes to some people, that command has to be given strongly for them to follow. I'm sure that what command that has been given to them is going to build their life on. We, we, we need to have that thing set, set in our life. To have, to have that, uh, to have that uh, you know, uh, 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 intimacy built with Jesus. So this is uh, this is the second uh, um, uh, third point that we uh, we uh, discussed, and the fourth point we can see the screen, right? Yes. Yeah. Fourth point uh, is this: move into a conversation mode. You know, building intimacy is not just about building intimacy is not about just uh, you you sitting and talking to God. Move into a conversation. Discuss what you go through, what you feel like. Listen to him. So this this is something which we've spent a lot of time in the past. I'm not spending. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, spending more time here. Moving into a conversation mode, and the next one is uh, focus on listening. 
these two things go together especially in your in your personal prayer time personal prayer time if you really uh, wanted to go deeper i strongly recommend you spend a lot of time in listening to him and write down what he is telling you through the thoughts his inspiration most of us the inspiration comes to us through the thoughts write it down and and as you go ahead with your life you will see some of those or rather the thoughts that god holy spirit gives us unfolding in our lives you know one of the verses which really strengthened me to sit in the morning every day is isaiah 40 44 morning after morning he awakens he awakens my ear to listen as those who has been taught the lord god has opened my ear to listen that i do not rebel and i do not um, go backward so this listening having conversation build intimacy fifth one bounce back when you falter see no where in the bible or bible jesus jesus says you know that you will have only a perfect life or rather you do not see such a kind of a, a life in the in in the in the in 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 humans whether in the apostles or any of the people there are people who fall fall in their walk but the difference that that we see of such people walking is that they or falling is that they bounce back quickly that is the difference of a man of god a woman of god compared to compared to others when we walk we fall we 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 will fall we might fall but falling and staying there will not help us building intimacy bounce back as quickly as possible as fast as possible and that is that is something which uh, you know the lord through various parables we we learned that now we look at look at the parable of the lost uh, a sheep why did uh, why did jesus bring that parable of a sheep being lost god knows that in our life we will fall he brought another parable of the lost coin why did he bring in the parable of that lost particular coin so in this so the the message that we need to take is this that we bounce back as quickly as we can as quickly as possible i know some people who once it once they falter they completely fall fall away they completely feel guilty and they fall away that is not going to help the last point here is focus on the growth you evaluate yourself how after putting all these steps together how am i after 3 months of my spiritual walk have, have i in, improved is there any change in my life am i the same person am i am I, have, have i become better focus upon the growth focus upon that relationship a deepen deepening relationship with with the lord and this is what will help us to build intimacy these are some of the points which i uh, felt uh, uh, important for us to focus upon and then uh, we uh, you know once you once you follow this we will we will start building intimacy as you build intimacy as you start building intimacy with the lord you will actually learn more the lord will start teaching you more this is something which the lord taught me in the morning this morning i thought i'll share it with all of you and one more point which uh, i forgot to put it here is this once you really build intimacy with the lord there's the clear sign for you and i to evaluate is how is my attitude towards others am i able to forgive more am i able to love more i'm talking about our our fellow brothers and sisters those in the families your spouses your children 
am i able to you know love them more and this is a sign you can evaluate it's a dipstick for you and me to find whether you are growing in the lord and if you are if you are able to forgive your spouse you are able to love your children more it is a sign that you are growing in the lord okay so these things will really help us uh, help us uh, in our walk with the lord and building intimacy now from here i wanted to go into another another stream what jesus has uh, you know told uh, told louis i i don't i don't think we have the time for that today it's already 5:45 we will stop uh, with uh, this and i we will take uh, the uh, a second part uh, 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 later so any any points that you would like to uh, contribute uh, and uh, add to this what i have shared or you wanted to share some of your experiences on how you are building intimacy with the lord anybody wants to share yes brother jos yeah tell me uh, tell, tell me so uh, with with this uh, first it was after many years that i learned of uh, give us this day our daily bread i was unless i started to attend the classes i was just thinking of the physical portion of it and not the word of god so by by hearing to these classes that came first and then following that following it up as daily as first thing in the morning that what we need to do is share some time with jesus so the gospel reading or mass and a little bit of personal time uh, that helps and benefits uh, that's what i want to share praise god i mean that's a, it's a very good thought that's absolutely uh, uh, it's a very good thought in fact somebody the other day i was listening to someone uh, you know uh, talking uh, uh, about uh, about prioritizing you know if you really look at uh, our life whether our job our businesses everything you know all this uh, the health everything that god has given us is to fulfill his purpose okay he has given us a job because he want to fulfill certain purpose for us in this life so when we understand that part of it we will be able to prioritize our life what is that we wanted to do because as we grow older and older we are actually missing many opportunities that we got in our life the earlier we realize this the earlier we realize this faster we will be able to accomplish what god wanted us to do in this life the later we do it we probably will miss out a lot of opportunities that has come on our way so so uh, so this is on point which i wanted to in encourage all those young people in fact i have a very uh, young young um, a person who is a part of our bible study who is uh, physically 80 years old but mentally she is a 17 you know 18 years old you know i had this opportunity to meet her when i was in malaysia two weeks back even during our meeting she was plugged on to the to the bible study and no, and writing down the notes so i just wanted to you know encourage all of you uh, you know look at seriously our life in terms of what are the purposes in which god wanted us to in live in each one will have to figure out what is that god wanted us to do and accordingly uh, make changes and amendments in our life any other uh, thoughts uh, anybody wants to share okay so we will close the session in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen god bless you all see you all tomorrow bye bye Thank you. Thank you.